which is Dr. Leonard Peikoff, the founder of the Ayn Rand Institute. So, Doctor, I understand that if uh, the U.S. does go in with heavy-duty uh, air power and, and all kinds of things like this, and civilians get killed, you're not so worried about that. I'm absolutely not concerned with innocent people in the enemy territory. If they get killed, that is the responsibility of their government for initiating aggression against us. In any war, when you fight the enemy, you have to take anyone in that territory and regard him as part of the enemy. Otherwise, you can't defend yourself. If you're concerned with the innocents in those countries, you are pulling your punches in there by jeopardizing the innocents in our countries. It's either or. All if right. you believe in self-defense, you fight it to the full. If they were to adopt your philosophy, the Bush administration, and go in and just level a country, which wouldn't take much. I mean, it's not a sophisticated country. You could level that place in probably a day. Um, the rest of the Islamic world would probably rise up. You know, you'd see the dead babies and, and all of that. And we would be fighting then all of the uh, hundreds of millions of Muslims across the world. It well, seems me to me say, that that might be a war we don't want to get into. I don't think Afghanistan should be the primary battle place at all. But, I but answer the, the question. Desire to get Bin Laden. If they did, uh, no, if they if did what the you right suggest. Country, yes, if we hit the right country, which is Iran, and with the full effective force of the United States and unseated the Iranian government and made clear the principle why I say you would terrify the terrorists governments in the rest of, of the Middle well, East and you wrong? would not have the what problem. What if you're wrong? What if, what if you ignite if a what global if two and two conflict? Isn't for? What? You don't ignite a global conflict by exterminating an enemy that's trying to exterminate you. Uh, otherwise, you can say, I'm afraid of the repercussions of defending myself. Well, look, so there are I'll ways to do it. the terrorists unleash ger uh, germ warfare and chemical warfare and nuclear warfare on us. That's what's coming next, is the survival of this country. So either you say we're going to fight and, and we're not going to worry about the reaction. And the very fact that the United States is the only superpower, if it doesn't stand up and take over the worst country there, which is Iran, the source of this maniacal Islamic fundamentalist movement. If we don't do that, our name is mud and we deserve what we get. All right, but doctor, I mean, I, I am telling you that if the United States attacked Iran, that you would then run the risk of alienating all our friends, so-called friends in the Middle East, They're which so we depend on friends. oil. Well, They're we depend on that for oil. And you would ignite a jihad, oil. a holy war, and we get into a, holy... a world, a world war. See, I think you, you could do it there's surgically. There's nobody that would dare take on the United States if they thought that the United States would stand up for what it believes in. But because the United States has been a paper tiger for 50 years now toward the Mideast, they have total contempt for us. So they have to learn like any bully that has been getting away with murder and having the victim turn the other cheek and cower in fear, they have to learn that we will stand up. Other than that, we are destroyed as a country. Well, it's I'm not so sure. I think you might be overstating it. I think that we can go about can this... overstate the threat of people who destroy the World Trade Towers? Well, listen, I think we can get those people, and I think we can dismantle the governments that are unfriendly to us and harbor these terrorists without igniting a world war. Well, and I, I think we can do it. I think it's doable. I think it's doable. You can dismantle all the governments. I'm, I'm not saying you have to use nuclear weapons. I'm saying we have a moral right to use nuclear or any other weapons that is considered by the military the most effective. I'm not, I'm a civilian. I don't recommend strategy. I say to the military this, you have a moral right and a moral obligation to decide what course of battle is going to achieve a decisive American victory as fast as possible and with the fewest American casualties. If that includes nuclear weapons, you decide because only you, the military, know what the cost of All those right. weapons are, but, I mean, what you, the effects you, of spreading <laughs> radiation, etc. You can't look. We're not run by military here. We're run by civilians. Thank God. We have a civilian be government. We can't you be seeding. Like, doctor, hold it. Time out. Take a breath. Okay. We can't be seeding 
our, our uh, republic to the military. I mean, we tell them what to do. That's why you have a civilian commander in chief. Tell them what to do as policy, but do you mean we're going to vote on where to point the guns? No, what you're, type of look, your commander in chief tells the military exactly what to do and where to do it, and that's the uh, way it should be. Have you ever asked Mr. Bush to pick the weaponry that we're going to use? Well, absolutely. He and he'll declare, do he'll, you know? He'll decide by his well, defense secretary that's not how wars and the are State connected. Department people. Excuse me. Wars are conducted where the policy is set by the administration. The political and strategic goal the weaponry, uh, what it is, has to be properly decided by the generals in the field. No, you're if crazy. The White House, you sound like Doctor Strange wh- Love, Doctor. No, what are you, Doctor Strange Love, out the there? The White and House nuts. takes it over and hampers them. It's you're just talking about Vietnam again. No, you're talking yeah, about I mean we had, we had remember General reasons. Doctor, another breath. You remember General Curtis LeMay? He wanted to yeah. use nuclear weapons in North Vietnam. Come on. Come on! We should never we have be been doing in that North kind of Vietnam. Stuff. What? Don't tell me we shouldn't do it. We should never have been in North Vietnam. Right, we look. should not be focused. You don't on let the military now. dictate which weapons you use. They go by the Defense Department and the Pentagon. Well, and they're told what to do me, and they the, do it. It's but one last question, who, Doctor. Who doctor, know one what last they're question. doing? Yes. I. Which I'm the, not. Which uh, the people in Washington don't. I'm not a person who is easily dissuaded from justice, but I don't want to see women and children in Afghanistan slaughtered by bombs. I don't want to and see that. You're going that's to see women and children in New York slaughtered by bombs and that's your only choice. But if, no, it's not the only choice. There's yes, another it is. way it's to do it. Already. If you that other way other doesn't way. work, then I might go the your way. But I Which fight way try the other not, way. Tell me another way that hasn't been the tried The surgical for overthrow years. of that government and the methodical it's, hunting down of Bin Laden. What difference does it make if the Taliban is overthrown well, that's when step the one. source of the whole movement is in Iran? Well, that's step one. We'll deal with Iran, but we but deal with them in a very step. methodical and a way. Let's, Doc, pity, I let's run. have pity for Afghanistan All right. and take on Iran. I gotta run. Thanks very much. When we come back. I don't know how to make this transition. The Miss America pageant was 